everyone. It's Tuesday, April 17th, 2018, 6 o'clock. Uh, we first have to start with the meeting of the Board of the Liquor Commission. Uh, we have five applicants, the Elks Club, Second River Inn, Lazo's Pizza, Wellfleet Inc., and Rockingham Trading Company, Cambridge Country Store. Madam Chairman, do you want to do these all separate or do you want to do um, one bunch? Like we did the last time. We can do the whole bunch, I think. Okay, I'll make a motion that we approve the Elks Club Bells Falls uh, first class and outside consumption permit, Saxon River Inn uh, first class and outside consumption permit, Laszlo's Pizza Palace uh, first class permit, Wellfleet Inc. Uh, second class liquor license, and Rockingham Training Company doing business as a Cambridge country store, should be Cambridge Port, uh, second mm -hmm. class license. For a second. A second. Um, I just had a question about well, a couple of them actually. The Cambridge Country Store I had heard was closed. What's Me too. What's the story with that? Somebody knew about it last. I thought. And, uh, I don't know. I think there's new owners on it, but I, I'm just judging from the application. Yeah. This okay. automatic or whatever the address was there. Okay. Yeah. And Wellfleet is the store on Saxon River. Right. And then the. Elks Club, is that, did they, are they moving? I believe so, yeah. Yes. I think they're they got, that got permit, uh, approved last week, was it last week? Um, it's being approved. It's being approved. Yes. All right, anything else? Do we have uh, the originals coming around somewhere? I think our scribe's missing tonight. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she sent something. She did not read them out. I'll uh, skip out at some point and see if they're upstairs. She's out. Um, uh, she's out. want to use one of the bars and we'll just do them. Use that as the original. Well, uh, these aren't. They, they aren't. These are, these are that might be a, a good alternative. And yeah. if worst comes to worst, we can gather signatures another way. Okay. That would be good. Why don't we use yours? Check out right. right here. All right. All in favor. All right. All right. All right. Next, public hearing, the Rockingham Zoning Bylaws Amendment, the second required public hearing. I guess that's you, right? I'm here to answer questions if there's oh, anything to cover. But uh, the only thing that, I don't know if it was mentioned at the last, because we're required to have two hearings. Peter found an error on page 109 that has been since corrected. So it was just a small technical reference to a subsection that didn't exist. Once we clear this hearing, it'll just be an agenda item at your next meeting. You'll vote to approve. Just got that to. finalizes the bylaws. Is there any further questions have any or questions? comments about? We'll get these back to you. Thank you. All right. We'll start All the hearing. Copy, <coughs> copies have been made public. They're on the All website. All public notification has been done. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we can close that hearing and we'll wait for the vote next week. Perfect. Okay, now we'll call the meeting of the Rockingham Select Board to order 601, uh, 604. Are there any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting? I think so. No. Um, under uh, maybe item 4C, we have a discussion on USDA grant for uh, town hall elevator. Okay. Do you have anybody taking minutes tonight? Yeah. Uh, Terry's doing it from home. Uh, oh, okay. <coughs> I just was wondering. So I'm supposed to be recording. Uh, yep. Okay. No problem. Oh, she's oh, doing it through reason. the TV as well. Sorry, Terry. Sign these three here. All right. Two, uh, two on each page. So the first thing <coughs> then is access permit. Chuck. Uh, oh wait, no. I'm, I'm skipping way ahead. Oh my goodness. Mm. Approved minutes of April 3rd, 2018. Make the motion that we approve the minutes of April 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any public comments on items not on the agenda? Yes. Yeah. Um, Gary. <coughs> Gary Fox, uh, development director, and there's a collaboration. Um, of the uh, 
Bells Falls Downtown Development Alliance, the Cha Greater Falls Chamber of Commerce, Rockingham Arts and Museum Project, and it's for a, um, uh, a showcase, a um, business open house for the downtown. And this is a draft of the um, Save the Date card. There'll be an invite going out, so just to give the select board um, a, a heads up, uh, folks will be getting these, and uh, basically inviting folks from around the state and neighboring states to come and see um, available uh, retail storefronts, office spaces on second floors of the downtown buildings, and then uh, <coughs> industrial facilities that have space available uh, within the downtown. So there'll be the two tours, and it's from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on uh, May 18th. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, manager's report. Um, I mentioned before that uh, uh, I'd like to add to the agenda a uh, USDA grant for town hall elevator. I just want to report that we've been working on that and uh, um, uh, we've been offered a $50,000 grant and we can talk about that a little bit later, but uh, we had estimates early on of the, of the project costing roughly $98,000 and uh, we're going to have to pay for that with our own funds. You recall there was a, a, a bond passed and uh, 2016 to to do all that work, um, you know, town hall work as well as the rec center, and uh, uh, this gives us that much more money that we can work on uh, existing facilities. So that's a good thing. Uh, also, been notified from the uh, uh, Southern Windsor uh, Regional Planning Commission that uh, we are eligible for uh, zero percent grant funding for um, the remediation and removal of uh, ten church place. Um, so I think the number is roughly 108,000 that we're going to be eligible for, so that's good news also. Um, mm -hmm. Now uh, we can start putting together a uh, request for proposals for our invitation to bid to get that, uh, make that happen. And I've been working with Chuck on that project. Uh, so that's very good news. Um, those are really the uh, you know, like two items I was going to discuss at this point. No, actually, no, one last thing. Uh, tomorrow I may be testifying um, uh, over the phone with the uh, House Transportation Committee, once again dealing with the issue of um, uh, overweight uh, limits in villages. And uh, they are looking to remove that limitation uh, on villages whereby uh, the state highway um, load limits apply to villages. They're looking to get rid of that. One of the issues, however, is signage. They're going to require a sign on every road off every town uh, town one class highway that indicates what the load limit is and I'm arguing against that it's mostly going to be an expense on the part of the state it's going to be huge I mean, thousands and thousands of signs not just villages but towns as well um, this is a new requirement um, it's going to cost a bundle of money and we may be uh, on the hook for um, posts but they will be supplying signs not only up front but ongoing um, my sense is there should be a sign at, each, at every entrance of the town that says load limit 24,000 pounds unless otherwise indicated. And then, you know, that's, that's my take on it. But, uh, so that'll be tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. All right. Now we can go on to the agenda. <laughs> Access permit. Chuck, 120 Paradise Hill, James and Jane Mack. You should have materials on this. No, Mike and I reviewed it no, with the contractor. Uh, that got them. There's not much to discuss. We highly recommend the site visit if you ever want to get up that way. It's beautiful. But uh, this is going to be an improvement to the, uh, the end of the Class 3 road. No issues. Okay. All right. Uh, where, where is that ditch? They, got, they show what looks like a culvert going in, and it's a ditch along, I guess, the part of their property. Where is that ditch drain out? So what you're going to see is a removal of steel culvert at the location of the old driveway. Uh, ditching that basically picks up where that water was using this old steel culvert. It goes down to the new driveway. Right before the new driveway, there'll be a new 18-inch culvert that crosses the road at that location, spits out on the adjacent field. So, so, it, doesn't, so it doesn't exit out the water, doesn't get out of Paradise Hill? No, it's a okay. superior drainage. Close to the brook. Yeah. 
Okay, what's the feeling of the board? Motion to approve. I, uh, Madam Chairman, I, I move that we approve the access permit for 120 Paradise Hill, uh, James and Jane Macri. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Recycling Center, Gary. Vehicle placards and stickers. So, here we are. I, I had Gary <laughs> put together a nice synopsis yeah. of, of the program and I uh, handed that out, out to the board, so but he's here to talk further about that. And I brought you paper, so I'll take it with me to recycling if you'd like. One. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to waste paper, yeah. but yeah. I don't know what you ended up getting from yep. if they've got that or not, but there's a few other things with it. If it's redundant, I apologize, but I just want to make sure we are all talking about the same. So basically, I understand you folks talked at the last meeting that you had some questions about where we're at with the program. Shane and I have discussed a couple of things. I had some issues, but we're ready to roll with it. We just need a policy established, mm -hmm. basically. And there's some policy questions in that email that I just handed you a, a rehash of. Um, what I've also included in the packet is just for your information, it's just reference. There's a copy of the first two pages are of our certification that says who we service. On page two, you'll notice I highlighted on that mm -hmm. particular document. It's an eight-page document. Dor Doreen's probably familiar with it. <laughs> but it is on file at the town clerk's office. Anybody wants to read more of it. But that's the one line that talks about who we service down at the facility. Um, I put a copy of the current stickers that we have in your packet so you all can see that we've got them. We're ready to roll as soon as we get the policy established. There's another document in there which just is an example, and I apologize, it doesn't say example, but there's a uh, town of Cavendish uh, form that they use, I guess, in Cavendish to record the information on their transfer station permits. It's an example just showing what type of information we, we will need to collect. And finally, a some sort of a notice once we get a policy established. I mean, it's it's uh, it's only a draft. It's just give you an idea of what I intend or what I would suggest that we hand out once we get the policy established and and know who's going to get the stickers and how they're going to get them, where they're going to get them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So with that, be glad to answer questions. I got a quick one. Um, sometimes we use my car. And sometimes we use Jim's truck. So am I going to be able to get a permit for each? My feeling on it is that you're a resident and Jim's a resident. And you both are entitled to a sticker. Okay. That's the way I read it. And that's the way I would recommend it. But. Hey, you good. Are we thinking, well, this is probably all in a policy, but thinking about limiting the number of access permits. I mean, you know, you've got a guy that's got three or four vehicles over here <laughs> I mean, to end up handing out, you know, I mean. Yeah, I. It, it's, I know it's going to be a little hard to get to start it, but. Yeah. First thing's going to be established a policy, and I'd be willing to volunteer some time to put in to write one up. Sign them up. <laughs> this part here, this is pre previous, previously discussed charging $25 per year. Yep. For non-residents. Yep. 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 Right now it's free to all residents <clears throat> of, yep. of Rockingham and Westminster. Well, that's what we've been discussing. My recommendation would be free to Rockingham sure. residents. And uh, we think most Westminster residents didn't even use it because they had free curbside, zero sort. That days. was the theory. That was the theory. But do they come with construction debris and other, you know, other kind of stuff? They that do stuff's get charged. On occasion, uh, we do get compensated for that but not for the actual use or or whatever the facility with the exception of the amount that they rebate 
on the property tax annually. You know, the, the town, not the individuals. So that's what that's what's always been. It's been one of those things, you know. How much? How many Westminster folks use our facility? And I don't know. We've never really done a full blown. You know, have somebody sitting there doing a count to know how many are Westminster, how many are Rockingham, how many are Grafton, how many are Athens. Um, we get folks from all the all the towns, and I do know when Westminster was talking about doing things different back when the Wyndham Solid Waste closed, we had a lot of input from folks on Kissel <coughs> Hill, which is actually in Westminster. So I know we were seeing some of them, not necessarily for recycling, but for, you know, for using the facility for the pay-as-you-go stuff. So, well, is, the, is the question kind of, would, um, would you need a sticker to drive in to pay to get rid of metal or tires yes. or lawn yes the only thing you wouldn't have to have a sticker for because we can't charge for it is getting rid of electronics because computers and TVs because it's a state program and we've said that there would be no charge by participating in it we actually get money back you know by by uh, weight on that kind of stuff so we've signed an agreement with the state by participating in their that plan that program that we don't charge anybody so I know other places aren't charging for people bringing that in and those could come in from anybody you know somebody in Burlington they were driving by could stop in and drop one off so it'd be a little hard to yeah. do differently uh, question for Shane uh, I, I have a, uh, the uh, agreement between Westminster and Rockham as far as the taxes go it's like a $1,600 Switch. We we pay them. They turn around, send us a check back. I mm -hmm. mean, is it worth trying to redo that or trying to review that? And just I, I talked to the select board chair in Westminster, and as far as they're concerned, they're not too concerned about that agreement. Yeah, well. it it goes back to uh, Paul McGinley yeah. and uh, and Bill O'Connor when we were some years back. Uh, just had a, an exchange. Uh, it, was, it was never really appeared. It was never a board decision, from what I can see. Um, it's sort of a handshake situation, and um, it w it might make sense to do that. And you know, they could be pulled out of the permit, and if they want to use it, they can pay twenty five bucks a head. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, that's it, that's where we are right now. We have an agreement. Um, we wanted to kind of just roll it out, see how it went for a year, um, and it would just uh, you know. We want to do one thing at a time and not, not do both necessarily at the same time. Just get the permit process rolling and think about that for next year. His response it's a budget was, matter also. His response was that if, if we, we need to charge them, charge them. So the residents, I mean, they're supposed to have roadside pickup, but what they do is down there on their roadside pickup, that no matter how many apartments you have in an apartment house, they only get 52 or 54 bags mm -hmm. a year. You can buy more, but they're allotted so many bags to, to uh, dispose mm -hmm. of. And anything beyond that, they have to either buy or they have to pay to get rid of it. You would just so. need to make up the $1,600 in, in yeah. uh, permit, uh, yeah, so in what, permit yeah. fees. Good time. Well, you pay for bags. I think the concern these days is the amount that's going in the zero sort compactors. That's been an issue that's been raised. If they come from Westminster with bags of trash, they pay for it, Correct. no matter where you live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the zero sort thing, the guys running it and people, it's just very busy and that's what we want to try to limit who's putting stuff in there it, it's been busy tonnage wise I can't tell you that it's overwhelming compared to what our regular numbers have been from what I saw on the, on the reviews um, I don't know if people are not recycling as much the tonnage isn't showing it reflecting it but I did go back and look at tonnage numbers you know, the last few quarters I guess it was we started in September mm -hmm. I haven't seen a large increase in the tonnage on the recycling it's been pretty stable about what we had been doing it's actually pr pretty close to being right on the money what we projected but that having been said I will tell you that I had a conversation with a gentleman who I didn't recognize he was talking with a couple of folks down there last time we were open and uh, he was telling us how much nicer it was to come there than to go to Brattleboro. So I asked him where he was from, if he was from Westminster, and he said, no, Putney. So 
we're getting some mm -hmm. we're getting some other strays in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Brattleboro charges they they charge thirty five dollars down at Wyndham Solid Waste for for anybody. They, they only take people that are residents of their district, but it's thirty five bucks per person. Whether you're, I mean, even as a resident, and you still pay for your trash and you still pay for your disposal fees. So they charge the resident even for a, tick, a sticker. They charge for the, no the, the thirty-five dollar, the annual thirty-five dollar <laughs> fee, and they and they charge. So, you know that that's what we're looking at. Uh, you know, we're I, The sense is that we're getting some maybe some folks from a little farther south, maybe than Westminster. How many? I don't know. I, I really don't. I see regular people every week that I know that are coming. You know, they, we're getting a, a fairly good number from Grafton, but we have been. <coughs> that's not new. Uh, Athens, they're getting curbside pickup too, I believe, out there. But they had asked if they could use our facility. They, they joined our the same solid waste district that we're in, and they asked if they could bring stuff like C and D, and which they pay for, and uh, scrap metal and stuff like that to us. We didn't see an issue at the time because they pay for the C and D. If they're getting rid of trash, they pay for it. If they're getting rid of scrap metal, we make money on it. So there wasn't a big push. And I, I do believe that they're getting curbside pickup on the recycling as well out there. So. In your food scrap program, it hasn't really roared off to a start from what you're telling me. It's, uh, we started when we were supposed to. Um, it, we haven't had to add a tote yet. <laughs> we're, we're collecting it all in one tote and we're not filling it. I guess is the easiest way to respond to that. But no, we're, no it, hasn't, was, it hasn't taken off. When I was down there last, there was only one guy emptying his yeah. bucket in there. We, you know, I think we've, I, about the fullest we've been in that tote. It's a 48-gallon tote, for those of you who may not know. Mm -hmm. um, we've probably, a couple occasions, we've gotten to a half-full tote. But it's emptied weekly. So, I have three compost bins at my house, and we compost everything. But I don't compost meat scraps or bones. Are they accepted down at the? They are accepted at our place. Oh, okay. It doesn't work out good for backyard composters because you can't generate the heat in your compost piles to break down the bones. The outfit that we are using uh, say that they're acceptable. They do generate enough heat in the way they're doing it to be able to accept. Basically, their their motto was I don't know if it still is I'm assuming it still is but back in July it was if it grows it goes mm -hmm. so basically <laughs> well, that's good to know. you know we 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 don't want paper we don't want some of the there's a there's a big difference between what people are calling organic composting and other composting there's a big difference between haulers and there's a big difference between folks that are doing it. We went with uh, grow, grow Compost. This is their name, and they do the organic compost. So the questions in four and five, who's, do we need to answer those, or is, who's going to answer those questions so we can draft up a policy about who's going to keep records, where do they get them, who's going to enforce it <clears throat> type questions. That's tell me. That would be part of tell me. Yeah, I know be. Shane and I may dis disagree a policy. little bit on on uh, on how where where yeah. they get them and, and how they get them. Well, who makes that decision? Well, I think uh, it's probably you and your policy like, when well, you establish yeah. it. But yeah, uh, I mean, we need to think about practical things. One of the, you know we don't want to hold people up as they're as they're coming in to the facility. That, it's already it's difficult, so we don't want to be doing that. Ideally, people would be coming ahead of time and coming to town hall and. One of the things is, is record keeping, making sure that whatever records we, when I have no problem with doing it at town hall, it might be, be great. I'll talk to Kathleen to see if she'd be willing to be the person to do it in the clerk's office. But, um, you know, we'll have to make sure that whatever records we have are in sync with whatever records they may have. Because if you've got someone who shows up on a Saturday, they can't just run over to town hall to pick one up. And it's not necessarily appropriate to ask them to do that when they're when their vehicles full of stuff. So we could maybe hand over on Friday afternoons the list, and so on Saturday you've got it. But at other times, say on, on Wednesday, they would have to you know, be dispatched over to the town hall. Um, we could just we could find a way, but it's going to take some growing pains. Having a handful to sell there as well on a Saturday, if someone pulls in without one, 
and you don't want to hold them up, you shuffle them over by the... Right. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, I, I actually ran into it right, when my, we were cleaning out my in-laws place over in Peru. They used the London Dairy Transfer Station, and so we went up and we filled three pickup trucks and we headed to, to London Dairy, and when we got there, we found out that you need a sticker. Uh, we didn't have it, but they sold us one on site. I understand they may have changed that. They may be only doing it at their town offices now, but back then we had to purchase the sticker and then pay for disposal right there on site. I'm not opposed to doing that. My concern with having too many things in that little shed of ours down there is we're only there two days a week. Those stickers are money. Yeah. They cost us money and they're worth money. Are we, so we're still doing the transfer station coupons, right? <coughs> we're still selling yeah. those. And the Maybe town the clerk is still selling them, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. No. No. Yeah. The Mine town clerks, there. they're all being purchased? Well, we're selling them down there too, but I assume and they, they're still selling them at the town clerk. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I got something to give and it really Maybe. isn't I don't a know. big deal. We used to have a record uh, keeping system. Uh, your friend there that works inside, he would come in and get like a couple hundred, we'd yeah, write it down, we kept track of everything. It's not a difficult job, so I don't see why the clerk can't continue with that. Well, if, if we had a form, also. if we had a form similar to what you see in here, it doesn't have to be exactly that, but if we had a form similar to that, Bob could, could sell them, you know, have a half a dozen on hand, yeah. sell them and then turn that in with his paperwork, the forms and the cash from it, and then turn that in when he turns the rest of the paperwork in, the deposit in uh, on, I think he brings them in on Wednesdays, I think, after we close. So you'd be getting them every week at the town hall, then they could update the record from, from there if he sold any over the weekend. You could b build in an incentive to get people to do it before July 1st. Well, we got two months. If we can get this nailed down, get the policy nailed down, we got all of May and June mm -hmm. to get people starting to think about it, come in, and we can just really start flooding the the area with the, with the notices and mm -hmm. get some maybe some PSAs out mm -hmm. on. If there's no objection, I'll start writing that thing tomorrow, and then I can zip it in the chain, and he can look it over and see what he thinks, and add his comments or whatever. Then sure. at our next meeting, we can look at it, and I can we can email it all to everybody to back it. They can look at it, and sure. see what they want to think. And you know, and even uh, you know, at at the facility, you can you can hand out stuff that says it's coming, and here's where you get your, uh, your tickets. Do it early. Maybe build an incentive somehow. Anybody who gets in at a certain time is entered into a uh, uh, you know, raffle or something like that. Well, I think most of the people, if they know they got to come to town office to do it, and they know they've got two months, I think they can find the time to, to yeah. pop You'd in. You'd think there. that, but I, mm. I'll tell you. Well, if they don't, it's... <laughs> if they you know, don't, then they're going to have to go get one. <laughs> We're giving them two months. I mean, we... Right. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. I just, I would like to get, a, get start selling the tickets, even though it's not taking effect until July 1, where we're going to enforce it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. I mean, I don't know. We can put it out there that they're getting two months extra <laughs> by buying it early. There you go. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, no, I, we're ready to go. It's just these types of some of the policy stuff that I I would feel better if it was nailed down rather than me just shooting in the dark. Yeah. Any other questions? So Peter, you can get that going. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you for yeah, thank you. Thank you. So we're good with twenty-five dollars. Yep, 25 okay. yep. Fine. sounds yeah. like a winner. It's a good okay. idea to have that on there because they can, you know, and make them aware of some identification. I mean, apartment dwellers, I mean, they can down there. You aren't going to know, I mean. And the different towns write that right in their policy. I'll tell you, I've, I've done a lot of research from the different towns and how different places handle it. Some of them require, you know, the, if they're a renter, they have a rental agreement, a copy of the rental agreement. Hmm. I don't know how. Proof of residency. You know, let's start there. If we need to fine tune that later, then. The other thing too that people need to be aware of that if the renter uh, gets a sticker and then moves out of town, we have no way of knowing that. I mean, because he's already got the ticket in his possession. So if he shows up to dump his material because he's got to pay some more money elsewhere, we're going to have to. 
deal with that. But I mean, that's one of those things. When the sticker runs out in the year, right? The like stickers, ex the stickers done. expire annually, so they're right. going to be done. So, if they I come mean, back, we've already got their money, so yeah. they can come back. Yeah. Oh yeah. What if you sell your car or buy a new car? You got to deal with that also. Other towns address that by by saying, like, if you broke your windshield, and it was that was the other question of where are we putting these? My recommendation would be lower right corner of the of the windshield where they're visible. You know, when they come in and they're not an obstruction to the view in the windshield. That's legal, that location? Well, I'm not a police officer. It is. Uh, it is legal. That location is? Okay. As long as it's not in your sight of vision. That's where most of the towns require they be placed. And these are self adhesive on the inside, so they can be stuck to the inside of the window, so that they need to stay with the vehicle that they're registered to. Um, like I said, if they had a broken windshield, they had to have their windshield replaced. Bring back as much of the sticker as you can to the town clerk's office. They'll check the form and they'll reissue a new ticket, a new bus permit for the remainder of the year if, if there's a legitimate reason to, to have to replace it. It's a lot like they do with the uh, inspection stickers at the inspection stations. And would that be the same if you did sell your car? And, <laughs> and there's issues like that too. I guess it depends on your policy. I guess you could come in with the proof of sale they, you're going to have it on record well the other thing if they go and if it's in a broken windshield they're going to get it repaired at a windshield offer they can bring in a bill saying i had to get my windshield replaced right right and okay, i think it's important that we get um a resident verification like the renters oh yeah and then if the person sells their car breaks their windshield if they're in the records is that person bought a thing we give them another one it shouldn't be that difficult well then why don't we just requires as a you know whether it be a utility bill or something but how about a driver's yeah. license because everybody ought to have one you know, Unless right there. you know but um the uh if, yeah i guess one of the things to think about and putting something together is what would be those proofs proofs of well, i don't think a renter's agreement is is, no, is too much to add right there i mean some people you know they may get electricity and heat may be included in their rent so i mean you can't really bring in you know, <coughs> If it's not, then I don't know how many people do that anymore. But <laughs> I mean, include the heat. Well, yeah, you yeah. looked at policies. Yeah. Have you looked at the policies? I'm sorry, I'm glad to hear you folks all talking this because this is all stuff that you and you. Okay, well, one question and more come yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Better, uh, they have a utility bill. They have a driver's license. Different towns simple. do it differently. It, it could be you know we talk. Some towns do it by property tax records some towns do it by voter registration records some towns do it by driver's license some towns do it by hmm. mail addresses do you have written policies from other other towns at all um yeah i've got about 20 of them different i mean off websites not yeah, yeah. not exact policies but i mean well, that's why i left a very plain on this proof of residency right yeah. it doesn't matter to me how they prove it as long as they can prove it they're a resident and if there's a question then somebody's going to have to make that determination and that would be the person selling the permit or handing it out yep. mm -hmm. well the town clerk's obviously used to that because you have to do it when you're voting get right. a marriage license or any of those right. things you have to show yeah. right. so. dog licenses marriage yeah. licenses i mean there's always something it, i think with westminster we would just give them to westminster let them figure it out that would be my suggestion yeah. give them because a they've got people with putney addresses and what well, that's it. Right. The same with Saxon River, the same thing. Right. I mean, you got Westminster people coming in because they have a P.O. box. They're on Hatley Hill or something. They have a P.O. box in Saxon right. River. Although I've been told that Chester, Chester. Chester. Yeah. P.O. kind of sorted that out and they threw those people out. They said they can't use that P.O. anymore. for, <laughs> So they have to go all the way to Westminster to get the mail now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, I, anything? We do have 2,000 ticket or stickers. That's all I ordered because I really had no clue what we were going to need. I kind of based it on what Wyndham Solid Waste did. I mean, they're a big district. They're selling to a lot of towns. They traditionally, up until this past year, had been selling about 1,500 tickets a year, or permits a year. Um, they were over 2,500 when I talked to them back in, I think it was February, thereabouts. So their, theirs was on the upswing as well down there since they got out of the recycling and things and started. But if you saw you were getting low, it wouldn't take much time to order. Yeah, the more. turnaround on them from when I put the order in was about a week. So perfect. It's, I'm not concerned. They've got it now. They've got the, the design. Uh, All right. Anything further? No? Thank you, Gary. Okay. Thanks, Lucky. Oh, I have one other. 
question. At one point, we talked. We you know we really had a real discussion about it about extending the hours. I know you have volunteer and staff issue time uh, issues, but is that something that we'd consider, particularly the Saturday, especially the Saturday hours? I mean, because there is a lot of people waiting and backing up, and if we had it. I don't know if it would make a difference if it was open any later or not, but. Uh, I don't know if it would. Um, I've always been hesitant to add more hours on Saturday because for two reasons. One's selfish and the other one's uh, the volunteers who are already giving up six, six <coughs> hours a day anyway. We will be hiring a new part-timer starting July 1. But yeah, that's you know, there's you need a lot more resources in order to make that happen. Yeah. yeah. All right. But it's I mean if you want to talk about it, it's worth talking about. I'm not necessarily completely opposed to it. I, I've got comments from plenty of people have who have yeah. who've asked for, you know, either another day or extended hours. Yeah. I just think it's a lot to ask of volunteers. No, it is. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you'd have to break Especially up in the summer. Time. But I imagine in the winter when it's around zero or ten below, yeah. it ain't yeah. no fun standing out. We look forward to that one o'clock hour. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> All um, right. Well, just on, on the facility, we are going to start uh, in on uh, the other uh, compactors. Um, go out to bid soon on that. Yep. And then, um, uh, actually, I just want to let you know that there's a discussion going on and online about uh, coverings for. Uh, for compactors, so I'll, I'll send you information on that. Okay. Yeah, we're supposed to get a roof over one of them. Right. <laughs> Winter won't end. He has no time. Not on my task list. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Pepper's not here. So. Yeah, like get a little pop up. Yeah, there, there you go. go. No, we talked about that. We talked about that actually. All right. Well, thank you, you Gary. Yeah. yeah. All right. Highway Department. Review list of recommended roads for paving. So, well, um, I was going to recommend we have uh, Todd Hinger here, who is our um, supposed to, for, to be our engineer, and to talk about sidewalks, and maybe we can work with him because Mike's going to be here for both. Okay, Would that be okay. Yep, yep. that's fine. Um, All right, downtown sidewalk <laughs> engineering proposal. Yeah, for, so for <laughs> sidewalks, I I, I sent out to. Um, the board uh, a proposed contract and uh, because it exceeds the um, uh, theory the amount that I uh, as manager would uh, be able to uh, approve obviously I'm bringing it to the board um, some of the issues in, in taking a look or we've already done some work as it is so, in so far as um, uh, surveys concerned we, we brought in um, Di Bernardo and they they did some work to uh, just look at the the grades and they sort of shot all the grades um, and that's going to be roughly eighteen hundred dollars i think that is already which we have in our budget uh, but in order to get the other sidewalks um, done right we clearly need to have engineering assistance to do that um, and that it's they need to be uh, maybe Todd, you could speak further to it, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done than just just pulling them out and put them in the, the way they are. Um, if you can, and also, in addition, I have uh, we got late on Friday some uh, sort of ag order of magnitude and pricing for what some of the, the work might be, and it's it's pretty high. But I think over time it needs to get done, and we can at least design this now and implement it in in stages as necessary. But. Todd, did you want to add yeah, one of, the, one of the main benefits is sort of it's an opportune time to do it because you have you have the bids for the paving project that's going to be happening right out front. It's that's mid June, I think you theoretically can start, and a lot of the sidewalks along that section, it, with just some minor changes, the drainage could be improved quite a bit on the sidewalks themselves, but then. Also, the ADA ramps at some of the crossings right now are non-existent or pretty hazardous. The, to correct them, it will affect you know where, the, where we bump into the pavement. So we can fix it now before the pavement. Once the pavement's done, you're going to be stuck with what you have. 
the same thing is true for several of the drainage features out there on both the east and the west side. Right now you've got some big puddles that stay right in areas and they are chiefly responsible for the pavement falling apart as well as you know, pedestrian safety. Uh, so the, in the proposal, we walked, the, we walked both sides of the sidewalk. We talked about things that could be improved and there are some items that will really benefit from some adjustments. If you do it now, we can, we can add curb where the curb is missing. We can adjust the curb where we need to. Uh, and on a sort of a larger planning scale, one thing that, that you have as well is on the east side, you know where the parking area is? There's perhaps 15, 20 car parking past the coffee house? 11. Was that? 11. 11? <laughs> did you count the picture? He works no. right there. Oh, do you? And there's, there's, a, there's an opportunity right now to adjust the sidewalk and to make it more like the downtown or the sidewalk. You have the, you have the building, the sidewalk, and then the parking. So when someone backs up, they ba are backing up at least in the traffic. That whole section, maybe 250 feet, when someone backs up, they back over the pedestrians. So they, have the, they have the possibility to. But also, if we, if we adjust that sidewalk now, or at least come up with the plan to adjust it, uh, we can fix some of the drainage issues there. Right now, the water comes down the street, sort of runs on the sidewalk the whole way, and then has nowhere to go because the catch, one catch basin that's there, it misses. And then at the bottom of the hill, the catch basin, it, it, it has to make quite a puddle to get into. So if we move the sidewalk, then you'll have nice new paving and the paving, pavement will be guiding the drainage right into some new, one new catch basin that we would add and then adjust the catch basin. Uh, and so yeah, the sidewalk would go on the back side of that parking area yeah. around it. I'm not so sure if I go along with that idea. I, yeah, and I mean, we, we at the Legion parking lot, which is up this end of town, there's more cars up there, <coughs> there's more traffic on that end, or almost as much as that. I don't think you've ever, since I've been around, I don't think anybody's been run over over there. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be striped or something so that people know that it's delineated as a sidewalk area. But to change that area to go around, I, I think we're getting involved with some extra, some, some cost and stuff while that bank is so steep right there. The railroad track, and you're gonna have to put fencing and everything else up there. I mean, some kid could roll down over the bank, and he's down there on a track before you even know it. I mean, uh, it, people aren't gonna go around that. They're gonna still walk where they're normally used to walk, and right down straight, straight down Sidewalk the way it currently is. That's my thinking, anyway. On it, it's just it's not ideal. I mean, then, you know, it's should, not ideal, I mean, but it's, it's a pedestrian it's, area. We should, you know, in my opinion, just you know. You got kind of accessories. There. I mean, you got probably twice as many as that up at the Legion parking lot. We don't do it up there. I mean, and I mean, but I, you know, anytime you walk out of your, I mean, it's it's always an uncomfortable feeling walking on there. You're going to get backed into or something like that. It's always. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tyler, do you have something? Would the catch basin go in where the puddles are, regardless if you move the sidewalk? Yeah, and the, the, the challenge right there is it, because the sidewalk is sort of the low point, the pavement and the sidewalk just fall apart. You know, they get they get that water running and, and if you have a concrete sidewalk against the pavement in a ditch, then it's you're always gonna have sort of a battle there. And then a few short years you're gonna have to edge your pavement's all gonna be broken up again. Because that water's gonna get between the pavement and the concrete, like you said. Like it's doing now, it's like all deteriorated. I'd mentioned before that we do have some um, some estimates of cost uh, for for some of this work. And you can take one and hand it down. Another, another thing we did too, the, what the proposal includes, is we take the we take the plans to eighty five percent. That is, we get we think about that those sort of things, figure out exactly what we want to change, what's going to look different, where we're going to add curb, where we're going to put the catch basins. And then, then I sort of deliver them to you. You can look at them, uh, and then we make any changes we want to make. So if that, at that point, we'll have a better idea of what's the benefit of the sidewalk moving, where is it actually going to go, uh, how does it interface with some of the plans that building owner has for putting in a new, 
the building owner met with us there and wants to have a door on that side. So there's a benefit to having that take place there. So, but with the plan in front of us, we can we can go through that. We're not uh, going to deliver 100% plans and just say here you're stuck with it. Uh, we do have one draft plan that would come to you first before we set and then finalize it for bid. Where I'm sorry, where where are scopes one through seven detailed right here. This that's the whole thing from here up to the top of the hill and, and across to the little gap mm -hmm. back down to the coffee shop, including the sidewalk. It's just cut that's out one to seven cut in pieces. With uh, well, they're all numbered, and then they're some are removed right. for different those prices. Are other options. Where are those yeah, options? So what I so what I did what I do is I say On this num thing? number. Oh. Yeah. They're not showing anywhere. You mean on the drawing itself? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand what the difference in these scopes are, because if we're removing half of them and trying to decide on something, I, I need to know what we're doing. Right, no, this, this, this is this not year. deciding. The real decision today is is uh, hiring Todd Okay. and being okay with that and then working toward getting this done. And it may be that only some can get done this year based upon the money we have. And do we have to make a decision? Don't we have to make a decision on what sections we need to get done before paving? Well, sooner than later, yeah. Yes. So we're making a decision on paying an engineer, and when are we going to make the decision on sidewalks? Well, I think what we need to do is is do it and uh, design it, uh, and then get some I don't know, get pricing on each phase. I, mean, what, I think one of the essentials is right in front of the YMCA office is that uh, handicap crossing right there to me is number one it has to be has to be dealt with uh, other and sidewalks curbing. can last yeah I think any of the curbing work that needs to get done should get done before Absolutely. that's that really needs to get done before the paving just so, regular sidewalk work could get done next year you know as long as you're using uh, not using track vehicles and doing it so the elevation of most of the existing curbing well that's a question I had for him we haven't talked about yet <clears throat> curbing elevation versus backside of sidewalk. Yeah, so right. right, some some locations right. too. You have you actually have it where the curbing right. is separated from and the I don't sidewalk. Know where those are. And and part part of the the plan will be to sort of wipe, you know, give you a clean slate. Again, those areas against the building where we can raise it, we will. Some of the some of the buildings you just can't. Um, so we'll raise it to make a little bit of slope on the sidewalk away. And then the areas where the sidewalk is depressed is lower than the curb. We'll bring the sidewalk up if we can or lower the curb if we can. So we go through just sort of the idea is uh, can we do the plan? And then when we, when we make the bid package up, we'll set. Um, when you look at this pricing, you'll see that I'm sort of proposing this is about what I think it's going to cost you. If we pull out this scope, for example, not do the subgrade and and then then the price will go down but we'll be stuck with whatever subgrade we have uh, and then is it about the same area all, all these different proposals you're just removing a certain phase of the if you if procedure you read, if, if you read from you have the pricing that you're looking at mm -hmm. yeah if you look from the if you look from left to right mm -hmm. it's the same amount of project that is 1,200 feet okay. is, is from left to right, just we whittle down the scope. Sure. Okay. Then you go to the next one, the next one says in front of the hula cat, mm -hmm. that 500 feet, we just don't do that. The that, next so one? The next one is then we remove the section that goes uh, around the parking area okay. behind the coffee house. Then the next one down is we don't do anything next to the coffee shop. So basically we take everything the third one was, I'm sorry, second one was no hula cat, I wrote. And the third one would be, anybody here? Third one would be no uh, YMCA. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Five is going to stay with all of them regardless. Yeah, I, I'm sort of, I sort of have decided, if I, you, you need to do those drainage yeah, features, so I kept that in there. My question, too, regarding the curbing elevation would be, how, would it affect the paving? So, say, the slope of the sidewalk, this and that, 
we're about to pave so if we don't fix curbing before that is that going to be you know what i mean you just have to live with any puddling that's on the sidewalk between the buildings and the curbs you can't come but the new asphalt should come in about the same height as what's there now yeah. and that's high enough the curbing yeah. in in the places yeah. we think yeah. so then what the what adjusting that curb is not going to be a lot not much at all if we have what we have to adjust yeah, we've so put that's built into the, the pricing the that you're looking at. Is it is adjusting the curb where yeah. we need to? But you're right. The, the for the purpose of the slope of the sidewalk to make yeah. sure. Yes. For, for the slope of the sidewalk. So when we can lower it, we will. You're still going to have the drawback curb. yet is it's 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 really bad to do it after. Right. If you adjust that curb after you pull it out, the road sub base falls down, mm -hmm. and you try and stand that curb back up. Uh, so you really really can't. And you said you were going to look at that, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is like even if we raised it up and got the sidewalks, if we had to raise it, curb, whatever, inch and three quarter to make it work later with the sidewalks. So okay. that we could pave and not have to disturb the <clears throat> No, you'll you'll still disturb the pavement down the road. By how? By redoing the sidewalk after? Yeah, you try to raise that curb and it's not you're not gonna be able to do it up with that new pavement. No, I want it. It'll break away. Do it before, before, right, before the curbs before right. Right. So well, in afterwards, you want to come in and pull that sidewalk? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. You got to be careful, but it can be done. Well, I think. I think what you're saying is that you want any any curb adjustments should be done before yeah, paving, no matter right, what. Right. If we want to come back at a later date and put the concrete back in, we right. Yes. Yeah. Is that what? You just got to be careful, but yeah, it's yeah. tricky. <clears throat> it is. Right. You could. You could. You could. We've you done could. it. But it's, yeah. If it's coming in the near term, you can do that. Yeah. If it's going to be a year or two, you'd want to sort of do it judiciously because then people are tripping over. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what's the turnaround on? Um, I mean, if we go ahead and approve this today, we're going to. I'm going to. We're going to go as fast as we can because we, we to. we're going to have. I mean, we're going to have to be in the in the. To the three week range, four weeks, because if we don't, then you'll miss the possibility of doing it. Mm -hmm. What's the issue with the crowd, the uh, catch basin right now? You say they're not draining mm -hmm. right. Why is that? Is that because the road's not pitched correctly? It, any, yeah, there's any number of things. In, the, in one location, in two locations, you just don't have one. So two, there's two additional catch basins that are going to be put in. One is offset from the low point of the road, so the water just runs past it. Uh, there's any number of reasons why that can happen over time, but uh, so one is just getting by, and then then another one's right by the side, right by the uh, at the very bottom the of the hill. Of flat iron. Is uh, the the pavement has just adjusted over time and sort of makes it so the water has to pond up to go in. So wouldn't that be corrected when you do the paving? I would think. You, you, you would think so. So, um, if we, any new ones will be in before you pave. That's the benefit. Any that need to be adjusted will be in before they pave. So the mess that we make doing it will be washed away. But um, the paving project, they're going to come in there and they're going to go as fast as they can. They're going to do what little grading they want to do but pavers aren't really good at, at like spending a bunch of time uh, thinking yeah. thinking about everything it's not like in our day what happened back when your day what did they just yeah they just slap the carpet down now and go what's happened is that that north side of the flat iron building it starts to elevate and you're basically going to put back what's already out there it's just going to be new you're going to mill get the profile of road back Shim and then overlay. So it's still there's still gonna be a little incline there, so that's the reason for that basin. So it, whatever gets past that other one, which it's gonna doesn't it's still gonna puddle in that corner no matter what we do. So that's the reason for that basin. Is that correct? It's gonna come back from the crosswalk at the entrance to the flat iron, it's gonna flow back that way, then it's gonna flow downhill from the existing basin by the crosswalk across from Jim. And when you if you go out if you go walk it, you take that take that little sketch that I have in there, the arrow is pointing right at where we're thinking of putting the catch basin so you'll be able to stand there and it'll make sense. You see that right now, even with the street wet, you'll see that it'll sort of line up. If it was a reconstruction project, we could make that work by just moving the one basin. 
if it was a total reconstruction. Okay, Tyler, did you have something else? Um, another question I have is, you got down here number K on this. Is this develop a conceptual plan for the, I guess it's a flat iron building, and add a door on the southern face to allow for future access to the sidewalk? Yeah. Don't they have one there now, a door that? They don't. So if you, go, if you look at that building right now, and you're looking at the big mural, Mm. There's no, there's no door there. There's no door there, but there's one restaurant on the sort right on the corner comes right, well, empties, <coughs> empties right on the sidewalk. Currently, why would you change the? Because she wants to put a stoop out there. Who does? Yeah, right. The owner of the building. Well, I guess that's on them, not on us. So, so this is the 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 idea of this is just to say, if she she gets rights to, I guess, one of the parking spaces right. there. Right. She has that area where she keeps her garbage keeps and everything. A dumpster, yeah. So if she, if, if we're going to plan this sidewalk right out front and she's going to make that change so that she, because I guess right now that door, you can't get upstairs so everybody who wants to come in has to go in the coffee shop to go up those back stairs. I don't yeah, know that. Like, said, I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense to no, me. Well, yeah, it shouldn't be on our tab. I mean, I've seen people coming out of there, so and they're not coming out of the, out of the, <clears throat> the shop itself. Yeah. They're coming out of that back door, so I'm assuming maybe it's their back entrance or escape route. I don't know if that's what you want to call it, but. Uh. But that's just to consider her. If we're designing something, you don't want to design so we, something so where she's going to improvement. When we go out there and we're planning the sidewalk, if. If we know there's going to be a new door there, at least we look at that. Like, what is the grade? What is the finish grade of that sidewalk going to be? So the amount of time for me, the cost of the town, it's not even. It's it's sort of, it's it's not a bunch of money. The idea is, we met, the sort of we met with someone who was owns one of the buildings. We talk about what their plans are. We hear what their concerns are, and we try and think about that when we're doing the plan. That's it. We're we're not <coughs> really doing anything besides that. Okay, John. So I think all we need to decide on is how much we want to spend to develop a plan and because we need we need a plan. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it appears we have two options. <coughs> which amount we would like to support spending to get these plans. These are estimates of cost, and you do bill on an hourly basis. Right. Right. So if it, something's not done, or it's done extra, I mean, it's all it's all based upon hours. So. so okay. You, so right, you have two different you have two different options there. Yeah. One, I'm saying this is what I think you should do. Uh, is the first option it has some time for me to help with the bid process mm -hmm. for me to do quantities for me to deal with any not deal with in totality but accommodate any interactions with owners as we try and figure out temporary access to their buildings and things like that when we tear up the sidewalk and to help the the municipal manager get the package put together that's the first number that you see and this and right. chain Jane asked me to um, make sure that I whittled everything out that I could, and if he does everything and I do nothing, then that's the second number. The question here. Yeah, I think Gary. <clears throat> yeah, um, in the uh, general conditions, and it, it sounds like this is what you're talking about here um, of the agreement. Uh, uh, you talk about work where there is development projects that the owner of the building is responsible for pre-construction design for anything that interfaces with your work. Um, so I'm wondering if um, uh, if you've already spoken with the, all the owners or if, if not, is there a time frame that will be in your, um, an expectation for the owners to be able to do that work? You. Yeah, right. And if the, the first scope the first scope includes includes my time doing that, the second scope does not. So I, the the second scope is just here's here's the plan. This this is the plan, and the municipal employees would have to do all that sort of thing. So I had in in this uh, 
in the proposal, I'm imagining that we would develop the plan to about 85%, prepare it, then we can have a public meeting and any of the any of the owners or tenants there could come and sort of see what's cooking. If they had any input, they could provide it and we could adjust things if we needed to. I just, just want to mention it in the, the highway budget, we do have uh, $24,000 available for engineering and this would be one project and uh, with the uh, paving project, there would be some need for funding there as well. So just want to let you know that. All right, so what does the board want to do? Option one, option two. I mean, my sense, timing-wise, option one, I mean, because time is ticking away for you. Sorry, Shane, but I mean, you were, things are probably piling up, I yep. think, to put a bid, a bid on your desk at this point when you're going to be heading out the door in a couple months. Might yeah, be yeah, I would strongly recommend we go with the um, uh, 16,000 uh, option because you're right. I mean, there's just so many other things that are going on. Um, we are right now in the process of... Uh, uh, putting together uh, job ads for a public works director and that individual would be doing that this normally this sort of work um, but we're not geared up for it right now but the cost the is in the budget hmm? the cost is in the budget yeah how do you want to word this that's the thing I'm and you're just gonna pick a number and yeah. put that in here that you're gonna Want so motion. I'll move that we go. Well, is there any other discussion? Or we gonna well, we'll have to make the motion, then we'll discuss. Get it on a table, though. We yeah. can fight over that again. Yeah. All right. So I'll move that we go with the option of 16500 Which would include items 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Um, the professional service agreement between Rockingham and our engineer. Is there a second? And to authorize the municipal manager to execute oh, the document. Is there a second? Second. And discussion. I, I'm going to be in favor of the other one. Mm -hmm. Just because of the cost. For part of the bidding process, I, I think that's in the manager's um, scope of work. And that's where we come in to help with the bidding process. And choose that's that's how I feel it's five thousand dollar difference I could see that if we weren't in the situation when we have a manager leaving in two months and the engineers are going to do all the work and then we're going to decide how much we can spend to perform the work before paving but he won't be doing the bid package and in the second option you wouldn't be putting together any of the bid no, stuff for, and the costing like, and any of that correct so i i would be doing the sidewalk plans mm -hmm. the specifications for the concrete and such putting those pieces of paper together and just handing them over that you would have to prepare the bid documents and answer the public questions and Is there a way to amend item seven? Is that something we need to pay? Well, I mean, that's just this is just an estimate. Hmm? Uh, this, that is just an estimate of the time. It's correct. I mean, no, it's, but if we take, what if he could do uh, one six seven out? Take seven out. I mean, public meetings. I mean, we can. We, it's an agenda item, basically. A public meeting, same as zoning. We don't hire somebody to put that out there. Yeah, and it, it could be it, it could be that I would end up using half of that anyway. You know, I'm going to be charging by the hour, mm -hmm. and this is what I think what I really think it's going to cost. Um, but sometimes the public just isn't that interested, and and we don't spend all that we don't spend that much time. But um, the on the on the other hand, I spend a lot of times I do end up managing uh, quite a bit of public input. You know, it takes quite a bit of time to get everybody on board and to work through their issues. And so this is sort of a middle road for doing that, that $1,500. I think he needs to be there. Just by going what I went through with Hadley and Oak Street. If I had not been there, well, he, I'm still not sure they're gonna, how long they're going to last. They poured concrete, 90 degrees, 100% humidity, and walked away without covering it. And I came upon it. So it's just something simple like that. Oh, yeah. 
You should gotta make sure the elevations are right. Gotta make sure the curbing's right. I'm Wait, sorry, it's all stuff I just that's have time that's to do. that's part of item seven. Yeah. It's gonna be. We're just talking about item seven. And public public meetings, correspondence outreach, with board. correspondence with local oh, boards. I don't have that. I don't have that sheet. That's the part. That's yeah, fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. I thought we were talking about uh, construction inspection. No, that's not. I don't. Okay. Is that in there? No, it's not in. I there. have it on my sheet. I must have. You're it. gonna okay. do construction inspection? I'll do the construction mm -hmm. inspection, but that will depend on the actual scope that gets picked. So if you look at the budget figures, the budget numbers, mm -hmm. that is um, line seven in the budget. Sorry, I did the I did the proposal. I just okay. happened to use word number set there's seven okay. on the okay. paperwork. That's where I'm confused. But yeah. this is we don't know what we're doing. We're just trying to get a plan. So and then can, to execute can, the plan, we don't know how much that's going to cost. So yeah, so if the, right. if the bids all come in, you're going to pick from the bids. You're going to say, we can get this far. And then, so you only have to pay me for construction inspection to do that that bit, however far you get. So I st it steps down with the scopes. In the budget, you see line, the item seven, it, it jumps down quite a bit. Okay. You know, we, start, we start at maybe... Six thousand, then we go down to four thousand, and it may be it might be less than that. If you have a big crew and they're really making good time, then it's going to be less than that. If you have two guys with tool belts, it's going to be more. Get up. I'll go to Gary first. So, so was the sixteen five a not to exceed, and if the public meetings and stuff aren't in there, and there's less hours? Could come in less. Fifteen hundred. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see doing this scope of work, I don't I don't see why it would be why it would be more. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I would my, make that my contract amendment. isn't set up as not to exceed, uh, you know, per se, but just based on what I know about the project so far and all the details we have I've already I've already seen the survey, you know, we've already got that in. So uh, I think it could potentially be less. Okay, Tom. How much did you say was in the budget for engineering? 24000 Engineering for site Highway of, department. So we're, we're, gonna, we're considering spending 70% on a section of sidewalk where we only may do a small portion. Well, we're toward the end. We're not, we haven't spent anything this fiscal year, so we've only got. We may have a person that will fill the position that could continue to. Not for the sidewalk, no. but okay, yeah. because that'll be not, it's not till July one. Yeah. The survey they got done. Uh, who paid for that, and where the funds come from for that? That's out of that twenty-four thousand dollars. You hope the cost there because that's really eighteen hundred. How much? 1800 change to get down to 22 something yeah. back just one more time mm -hmm. yeah. the the item seven in your proposal is the part that i i think Public if we could outreach. remove that part i would be more in favor of yeah. what 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 you would helping throughout the process that's fine with the, anything that's how fine I, with me. I put those stars all there like you can do it if you want to i will point out too um that Another thing that you see stepping down, if it's helpful as you try and make a decision, is if you presumptively eliminate any of the scopes now, if you said we're not, we're not even going to touch the part of the sidewalk by Hula, you can take that out now and I won't even design it. And, and so, so as you are writing down the steps there for what the first part includes with the next part, like the second one, if we eliminate that, then the engineering is going to be a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. right off the bat. I'm not suggesting you do that, but I'd give you right. that option. That's the numbers you can see uh, for six for the engineering. It starts at 16.5, and then if you only do the one side of the road and drainage features, take it to the other extreme all the way down at the bottom. You see it's 11,550. And if, if for some reason we do, I mean, if you, you would attend a public meeting, so then it would, you would be 
hourly charge to us for that. And yeah. if they had to do any correspondence, it would be hourly charges for that. Yeah, period. but with public meetings, you're also talking about one-on-one -on -one meetings with the public. Right. Right. Not just not yeah. public But I'm saying like if this. that had to happen, then it would, we would, it would be an hourly charge mm -hmm. if you had to do that for whatever reason. Yeah, but I would if, if if you if you eliminated those from the scope, I'd be presuming that when people called me and said, "Hey, I want to go over the plans with you," I would say, "Come to the public reflect." <laughs> yeah. Well, like one of the issues I, yeah. uh, comes to mind is with the um, uh, uh, where we have to change the YMCA. The, yeah, the YMCA there by virtue of dropping that curve there, we have to do something with, we have to create some kind of barrier um, on their property so that people don't trip and fall in, into it. So we need to coordinate with them and that's the sort of thing that I, I'm not prepared to do that, Mike's not prepared to do that because it's engineering solutions that we, I just can't do. You know, and that, That's when we would have to have him there for that. Well, that's not included in developing a project plan? That's so on an hourly basis, so yeah. it's an hour's an hour. Yeah, so it, on, on, $9, on, let, me, $9. let me just give you this example. Is that if that's your if that's your place developing the plan is I would drop the sidewalk, create the handicapped access. Right now those that place can walk up, they can have one giant long step. So I would show I'm, all the changes. I'm not questioning your plan at all. I yeah, think yeah. you're gonna have a great plan. I'm questioning the two different line items for the cost. If, if that's part of developing a plan, having a doctor or person that you may infringe on their property, that's part of developing a plan, is it not? And if it's hourly, why, why are there two different line items? Good question. So, so yeah, so the one, it, one is the, the cheapest price is I take the survey plan, I go back to my office and I develop the plan, and then I hand it over. I'm not, you know, doing the plan. I wouldn't be spe I wouldn't be talking to anybody. I would just do the plan. And if that's what the board wants to do, that's that's fine. Yeah. I mean, to me, it's not yeah. optimal, but it's fine. La lastly, I also feel like this is all based on how much work he does. This number is based on how much work he actually does. It, the cost could be significantly lower than this if we say, here's what we would like to address mm -hmm. so we can pave. Or we can say, spend that much and give us a plan of everything mm -hmm. for the future. Right? It's based on how much work he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means, I mean, do you want to discuss the whole cat option or not at this point? Or? I just, I think right now we just need to approve this, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to decide what we want him to do or someone is. Right. So I'm in favor of. So then the approve. We have a motion on the table, which was what again? <laughs> Where's the full one, Item <laughs> one through ten. <laughs> one through ten and sixteen thousand five hundred. Okay. So. Looks sounds like someone is Im interested in amending that to exclude item seven. Is that what you're saying? After all the discussion, you know, I don't think he's going to spend that much. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to incorporate it in other phases of the scope of work. That's what it sounds like. It's just explained. Okay. Right? Does everyone else feel differently or? Yeah, we'll do what we can to keep the price down and yeah. to keep the hours down. And I'm not going to have him call neighbors and stuff. I would be doing that. My, you know, we would. We've already done some of that already. Um, but you know, we'll we'll keep the cost as low as we can. Okay. So are you ready for a vote? Then? All in favor? Aye. 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 What are we voting on? The one motion ten. option, the one through ten. What kind of? Sixteen five. Not to exceed, correct? Correct. Okay. Well, the board has um, made a motion in the past to, you know, anytime the board approves a contract, any any change to that has to come back to the board. board. Okay. Yeah. Go along with that. Okay. Okay. All fair. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. But. Uh, yeah, so the, again, these, this is the order of magnitude on some of this work, and so we really need to, to work on, on how much money we have in, you know, uh, already, and 
see what we can do. When when do we do that? Like this um, is the part now. When do we find out what we need to do? And you start this tomorrow. This is what we have. Is the two twenty eight eight twenty one? Starts tonight. Or no? I'm sorry. Say again. This is what we have. Oh yeah. Um, so two weeks. Oh. Or two sixty three twenty one. No, that includes this chart. Like yeah, what that we I have. sent out. Yeah, we have we have dedicated some to. I had emailed that out at one point. Um, how much? You got, you got one and a half. I allocated for Sack and River. And if you don't do anything in Sack and River, they're going to be all over you. I can tell you that. So you're going to spend all that money on this project. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Issues. So you only got 228. Yeah, we have 228 to do it this year. You shouldn't spend this afternoon more money. I wouldn't think, but that's up to the board. I just, but to get back to this, we're on a time restraint with this because they're paving June 18th. Oh, yeah. So just to continue, how how are we going to meet again to approve his recommended work before paving in two weeks? That's going to be, we're going to be I into May. I don't know if we can do a turnaround in two weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out. We'll have to uh, maybe have a special meeting. Um, okay. yeah. and, but I think what's critical is getting done what needs to get done to support the paving project so that we're not back here next year digging up what we yep. just put in. That would be a crime. So how long is it going to take you to come up with this? I, I think, it, well, the, the whole thing. You're trying to, the planning whole thing. That's just, it's, yeah, it would take me three three weeks, probably. Three weeks? Yep. Okay. Well, that gives us a window we're looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we, we want to, you want to start, you know, solicitation or get it on the radar screen or screen of whatever contractors you like. What would you know? Yeah. Because once we get it from you, then we've got to decide how much money we have to play with and what we're not going to do or not are going to do mm -hmm. at that point. So we could be a month out yet. So you're looking end of April, end of May rather, somewhere around there. You got the holiday coming up, and then you're going to June, what, June right after alumni is supposed to start paving? That's when they can. That's not necessarily when okay. they are. Okay, so that's when they can. Is in, the, is bid, in the paving bid, do they have that? Can they start at the one through five section and leave and do section six less last? They, they could. We haven't specified, but they could. Yeah, they could do that. Yeah. Otherwise, one of them is going to be pushing the other by the looks of things. Mm. Yeah. But isn't there a date of completion in there? Yeah. Paving contract. Yeah. We can't. Looks to me like it's going to be a late start to the construction season, the way it's going. Hmm. I, do know, I do know that they're interested in doing uh, old terrace first, getting that done. Is there a way to prioritize what has to be at least moved or installed before paving? As soon as I find out what the his plan is, yeah, we'll know better. That's what we'd like to right. see happen here. Yeah, okay. So it sounds like we may have to have, time-wise, we may have to call a special meeting. Hmm. Um, other because yeah. because it looks like it with three weeks we're waiting on the first week. What do, you, you, what do you mean every two weeks or every two weeks? Yeah. yeah. So and the we, next one would it's possible we can have it to eighty five percent in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, but okay. I would I I would put it if you had the time put it on the agenda and then we we'll do our best. Okay, that sounds like a plan. All right, yeah, anything it's else? Be tight. It's yep. be tight. It's, it's gonna be tight. tight. Real tight. We'll get it done. <laughs> Positivity. Quote you on that. Yeah. Positivity. All right. Good. Thank, Thank you very you much. Very much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now review list of recommended roads for paving. <clears throat> so we have. What? Uh, you recall that uh, Everett Hammond was here at the previous meeting, and one thing uh, I handed out, uh, I emailed out and handed out to everybody uh, a revised version of his 2018 plan. Uh, Mike and I sat down with him and uh, went over you know, trying to figure out what we can do this year, what really needs to be done, um, recognizing the uh, interest from expressed by the folks in Saxons River uh, to get some work done there. 
trying to work uh, obviously on the downtown work, but also um, to preserve the work that was just done a year or so ago um, on uh, Rockingham Street, get, hit Canal Street, uh, and, even, and also even overlay West, you know, from Church, Church Street on uh, Westminster Street to bring that out to Earl Street. Just uh, give that a little bit. Tie it all in brand new. Um, and all that work comes in at roughly six hundred and eighty some odd thousand dollars. And um, I provided information to the board indicating that uh, all told we have roughly seven almost seven hundred and forty thousand dollars available to for all these all this work this year. This is not uh, touching the, uh, uh, the capital reserve fund that was established. One question. Yep. Uh, the one to third Rockingham Street. Yes. The bridge to Rockingham Street. What? To the pump station. Bump past the old Cumberland Brown. Oh. Okay. That's in rough shape. We got to do some of it now, or we'll be doing a lot more. So mill shim and overlay yeah. all that. Yep. Was it, wasn't there, wasn't there, Mike, um, an issue with the sidewalk across from there too? Somewhere through there and across from the fire station also? Yeah, I, yeah, that whole sidewalk, I mean, it, that whole bank's sloughing off. And then how about the drain intake or whatever manhole cover that they had the, there's maybe a barrel out there now for Yeah, it. we got to fix that. It's just a couple of rows of brick have it de deteriorated. Okay. Yeah. So as soon as they start making hot mix, we're going to do it. Right. So. And then, so from pump house to the bridge, yep. ship, um, Overlay chip seal, yeah. And then chip and seal on that other fairly new stuff. Right and one of the things that uh, I think there may be someone else who wants to put in a sprinkler system. Uh, I think the old, uh, what do you call it, Vermont pretzel. I've heard mm -hmm. that they may want to do that, and so uh, it would be good timing to get that done soon and then before the overlay work. No, the chip seal work, excuse me. Yeah, it would hide, it would hide I mean, that. I hate that they want, they should have done it when we did the project, but whatever reason it didn't happen. Well, I'm, I'm in, not even sure they want to do it, but right. I just, right. I heard but they do it now. Yep. If they want to do it, do it now. That's about the last one left of good yeah. Isn't um, that what we said? I hope so. Time? I hope so. <laughs> Any thoughts? I mean, it looks feasible to me. I think it's great. Saxon's River will get done, yeah. which is important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Main Street and Saxon's River and Pleasant Street. Uh, you know, just an overlay at Pleasant and Mill Mill Shim overlay. Um, you're gonna do you're gonna, in all Main the Street. Pleasant Street needs to be overlaid. Right up to Sean Campbell's, yeah. Where are we right talking up, about all the way up to? Um, right up to where the dirt. To the dirt. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can see the upper half of that, but I mean, the lower half doesn't look all that bad. Well, it's falling apart. It's rough. We were gonna do it several years ago, but the board opted not to. When we did the Riverside, when we did the East Side, did the River Street side and all that. We were going to jump over the other side, and he was removed from the budget. And so, based upon these changes, this is taking you know diff different ones from a couple of years out and bringing them all into one one you know 2018. That seemed to make sense. This was a goal of some of the previous board members to get all the ins and outs to the business district done, and now it's going to happen. It's going to and with the Route Five project done, we're going to be in really good shape. Mm -hmm. And this includes canal also, which is in tough shape. Yeah, the canal, canal is bad. bad. If anybody's bad. down there, it's really yeah. bad. And it's also tackling this, like I found this quite fascinating. We're, we're going to um, do some preventive maintenance to, so we can yeah. stop having to reconstruct. Right. It just, you know, chip seal is a big deal. It really is. Yeah. So that leaves, what, 40 something? ish I, I didn't do the math but that we can just I not mean, we have what's but that you've got you've got uh, six streets here that says doesn't include uh structure work structure work a lot of that's so just going to be right probably eat up at least half of that with structure work there will be some structure work i mean some of it's uh highway some of it's water and sewer uh, okay. but we'll do what we can get done so is the village eat the water and sewer part of it or 
Well, we do have we do have money in both water and sewer for. Uh, I'm just, for the sewer just asking a question. Honey. Yeah, I'm giving the answer. Yeah, you know, they do have money in. You know, we have thirty thousand. I know in water for main type of work, and uh, you know, that's for this year, and we have the same amount for next year, and then uh, we need to take a look at it, but we'll do it again. Okay. I make a motion. Uh, we approve 2018 ma um, sorry, ma maintenance financial plan. Does that work on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Aye. Thank you. Great. Answer Thanks. question. Get that page out. I'm sorry, what? It's kind of confusing me here. <laughs> we got Westminster Street from School Street to the Square. I didn't know School Street came out it's there. Not it's not a church. It's Church Street. And then you got Earl Street to School Street. Yeah, it's still Earl church. Earl Street's held down by street. Bond Auto. It's supposed to be Church Street. Earl to Church and then uh, Square to Church. Yeah, I said something cool about it, but it didn't get changed. Check them. Confused me, too. Told you I look at this. People in Church Street just runs up along the bathroom. Church up to the Episcopal Church, but yeah, actually, you get I don't know why that ever down by King Bank. Right, right. I don't know why he didn't. Okay. okay. All set? Good. Thank you. We survived the storm all right, I'm assuming? We did. Okay. Yeah. I see there's another culvert in Cambridge Port Road going up. On yeah, one on Cambridge Port Road and one on Turnpike, Turnpike Road. Road. They both got to be replaced. They both are. Frost must have moved them. Thank you. Are they paving 103 again? They yes. are. Yep. Yeah. When's that start? Starting mm -hmm. soon. And the Route yep. 12 project starting next All the way up to Longford. Yeah. Right up. Clarendon? From in Rockingham side, I think they're just doing a sh overlay yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Just yeah. An overlay. And uh, like I said, Route 12 starting next week. That's a three year project. So that's from Charlestown to Route oh, 12. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a How long is that going to run? Is that going to run all summer, probably? Well, I bet you guys up well and long because it's going to run a year. Real year pain in the, you know what, to get uh, up there. I take the interstate, so. <laughs> That's yeah, not know, but you're still going to. They're actually going to build that road out into the river. Yeah, right. Yeah, that line is going to be a that one. It, it was a rail. It's, well, it's it's cheaper right. and, ti and timelier to. Yeah. Build into the river than it is to move the rail. To move the rails, yeah. yeah I know, because it'd be six years speed. trying to get something done to the rail. It's right. a lot longer. Exactly. <laughs> so they ain't going to move. They ain't got to. Railroad has a lot of authority that some people don't realize. You can't wipe that. It's like the Hall. Yeah. yeah. But the same yeah. gentleman that was from the oh. GAF committee over there oh, really? that came here yeah. is the one that was huh. heading over there, heading that up. So it's great because it's way overdue. They won't work right through the Okay, now we're just having discussions. So let's. Let's uh, move on. Thanks a lot, Mike. Yep. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Select board items. We're all set. Yeah, Peter had a question for later. So uh, point Traffic Safety Committee. We had some interest. Were there any others that came in? I have a uh, file for Kerry. Um, so how many appointments were we looking to make here with the, uh, on the other section? Uh, uh, Kelly Tully. Yeah. Uh, Peter Golick. Mm -hmm. Joe Brissett. Mm -hmm. Cass Wright. Mm -hmm. Andrew Smith. Mm -hmm. Ron Lake. And just one, uh, one issue is that Stefan has been appointed by both boards. I had that same question, Shane. Are we got a problem because uh, of a uh, right? If he gets appointed, we got three select board members, right? Mm -hmm. That would create a quorum, which creates then it becomes a select board meeting, not a, a committee meeting, right? Even right. though you are representing the, the village, you're on both boards, right? And that's it's it's could be an issue yeah. with uh, that's open problem. meeting law, yeah. Good thing you caught that, Shane, because I was I had that written right down. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kerry caught it. Well, we yeah, okay. I wonder if she would have caught it. Yeah. So, do we have an opinion or a thought there, or what? Well, as soon as we have three members of a board yeah. talking about something under the uh, yeah. un yeah. over which the board has some regulation or authority, then it can becomes a board meeting. Yeah. So 
so then that means disappointing one select board. No. I mean, because you've already been appointed yeah. as trustees. Correct? We can only appoint one in that case in the select board. Well, he's been appointed by the village, not by the town. No, I know that. Well, I don't know. But if there are three, I mean, if you're, you can only talk to the town, I guess. I mean, to the village, sorry. As far as I would say, if we had to execute a decision, that would be my loose interpretation of that. But I don't honestly know what the exact, that may be something for the Secretary of State. Uh, if we went back and looked at the minutes, were Peter and I no, appointed from the select board? No, we haven't appointed the select board. We haven't appointed from the select board yet. We've got the expressed the interest, interest so yes. far. Yes. Well, well, knowing that we had to have two from the select board, why would the trustees appoint a member that's on both? Because he wasn't at the meeting. <laughs> oh, that was nice, too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for that one to come up. Well, also, how many? I mean, at this point, we have. It's we got four, six. five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's ten. ten. We got ten. Yep. We're dying we, we accept all of the Call people all. of interest. Four, six, interest. Four on the bottom. Mm -hmm. We're on the next page. In there, in there, oh, in there, oh. it's all listed. Oh. I mean, is ten unwieldy for this committee, or is that you think that's fine? I think that we need some clarification on what I would do because I don't want to muck up the works here either. As far as when it comes to, you know, the operation of this committee or a question in the open meeting. You know, I'm trying to think of similar instances with like the fire committee or something where I sat there and you had a select board person. But, but you not, only had two. Right, you only had two. Right, I, I don't think there's any question. That you, you can't have three board members no. sitting at a table no. talking no. about anything dealing with the town. Yeah. No. Um, so, yeah, you, maybe without it being, it being leading. Best if I recluse myself from that to some extent or what? And they recruit another trustee to sit on that in that capacity. Yeah, seeing as you weren't even at the meeting when they appointed you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how to take that. Okay. So is that what you do then? Yeah. Ask the trustees to appoint another? Yep. All right. And so then we would be appointing Gaetano, Peter, um, Deb, Mike, Ron, Kelly Tully, Cass Wright, Joe Bursett, and Andrew Smith. Would the staff would be full committee meet members, or I mean, would um, I mean, I guess they attend when they can. I mean, it's important Mike's there, but um, would they be attending as staff, or or would be appointing them to the committee as staff? Both residents, yeah. and so they have kind of uh, have dual dual reason to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why they, they wouldn't be voting members. Huh? But that way they have to attend all the meetings. Well, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want that, buddy? You so, know anything about it till now. Oh, I thought you <laughs> Yeah. You didn't know that you were a volunteer? No. Just like Peter? No, I mean, like Stephanie. You didn't know that? <laughs> no, I didn't. I thought it you knew about it. It's an issue because it, it's, there's probably going to be times when not everybody's going to be able to make it. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if we appoint you, I don't see fine why if you get any. I don't idea. see why I can't. But if, you know, could be a long going process. On. I love paintings. Can't you tell? Yeah. Yeah, we can tell. <laughs> I already tried to send them over. You won't go. <laughs> okay. So, do you want a motion? motion? Yes. So I will move that we appoint the following members to the, what are we calling this, the Traffic Safety Committee. Right. From the Select Board, Gaetano Pudignano and Peter Golick. From the Trustees, Deborah Wright, and we're going to look into another trustee leader. Is that yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. From the staff, Mike Hines, Highway Superintendent, Ron Lake, BF Police Chief, and others, Kelly Tully from Coda and Coda. 
Cass Wright, Joe Brissett, and Andrew Smith. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for putting your hat in the ring. Thank you. Uh, can I uh, yep. just Are you mention one quick thing? Uh -huh. um, since the way I picture this committee is it's essentially serving at the pleasure of your board, um, will your board be setting forth uh, your desired scope of the committee? So, you know, the committee has some a charge. framework to begin with. We should, yeah. You know, the committee won't be an autonomous, you know, group. And I understand, you know, as a committee, it doesn't have any authority. It just it's going to be coming back to your board with with what it uh, what it's learned or what its findings are. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if we could start with some uh, some scope of what you're looking for, that would be a big help. Might save a lot of time. Makes sense to have some target what we're shooting at rather mm -hmm. than just go out willy nilly and kind of just sit around and talk. Right. Well, wasn't part of the most recent rescinded motion, it wasn't the, the end result saying we would form a committee to discuss this? Right. Wasn't that, wouldn't be that something be a with the weight limits, good weight place limits to start? And, and, uh, Turning. You know, changing route. some areas of the road, but that's not in the committee's purview, but we can make suggestions. In the, it's, in the trust, it's in the select board's purview to make any road changes because they have the control of the town road, so. Maybe the committee so itself could, to, could make a recommend, recommendation on what they like to govern. It could be also a standing committee because the traffic stuff does come up from time, yeah. to, time to time. That's true. Adjusting issues, bike issues, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, maybe the things to, to bite off right off right off the bat is is overweight vehicles, truck traffic in general, and um, and vehicular oh, street geometry in the downtown. But it's not just the downtown; it's also elsewhere in the community. Does, does Carrie have everybody's email list that's going to be on this committee? I imagine. Only, only, yeah. for, okay. no, only for notification purposes and when we call the meeting. So well, if we don't, we'll get it. She's pretty good okay. at it. I would just think. Yeah, I think they all, at least the uh, the, the four others emailed her yeah. with their yeah, all interest. Yeah. Me a, I yeah. emailed too, so it's like, of course, yeah. my thoughts are anyway. On okay, anything else? Okay, moving on. So do we want to do we want to do any goals for this committee, or do you want to just take a general discussion and? Tom, are you shaking your head? You got policy or what? No, I think we could report back as to what what, okay. what direction the committee. I, I know we got a general idea what we're trying to. Discuss. I think that's truck weights. And there's enough stuff to and start. We're still in, in limbo with that change in the, uh, the village thing, and Shane yeah. may have some input on that when he comes back from this legislature. You know, I know that whole thing, according to the BLT News, I don't want back to the committee, so. Do they expect they're going to vote on that this year? I don't this know. What, transportation and this? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's in the bill. The bill was um, uh, approved by the Senate this morning. Senate and, uh, oh, they did approve this morning? Yeah. Yeah, so now it's over at the House. Yeah, yeah right. House um, Transportation. Yeah. Excuse me, Senate Transportation approved it. It's now at House Transportation. Okay. And they're, they're having a, a hearing tomorrow. Yeah, so that'll give some guidance. Okay. All right. Discuss the USAD yeah, USDA. About oh, Green, Green Street B. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I did skip over. You're B. really skipping along. I yet. am. <laughs> I spent my whole day doing two sets of taxes, so I'm, my brain is fried. <laughs> Nothing like having your organization taxes and personal taxes do the same day. Um, consider bids for 38 Green Street. Did we get any? We did. Yay. Oh. I don't well, know. We received two <laughs> bids, and uh, I'll give them to you to open. All right. One has two envelopes. Two envelopes. So we could take a choice of the higher the low. No, no, no. I don't. I think they may have misread the way the. Uh, the okay. Better city. Sorry. The first is from Sharon Bacelli for eleven thousand.
Okay, and then the second is the 4004 from Nina Nietzsche. Nietzsche? Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Okay. This must be her check, yeah. All right, well, I think we know where we're going with that one, right? What, yeah. what was the other one? Uh, 11,000 Sharon Bachelet. No, I mean the, oh. the other one below. The it's, it's a check. Oh, you have to have oh, a certified right. check. Okay. Um, so is there, does she state any intentions on that? Um, this bid is based on the liability and work involved with regards to the derelict barn on the property in need of substantial repair and to build a home within the footprint allowed. A curb cut would be necessary to allow for a driveway as setbacks have changed in the buildable area. I've been a property owner in Bellis Falls since 2006 and have undertook a substantial restoration of a commercial property on Canal Street for my business purposes. I value this community and look forward to retiring. And nothing in addition to. So Shane, I'll ask you the magic question. If we accept the bid, would we be accepting it with, with restrictions of what can be built there or? I mean, no, we, we didn't something. advertise that. And okay, we I, I, I did rec not recommend any kind of covenant or anything like that. It's free and clear. Um, uh, one thing that does need to happen is there needs to, uh, there's there's a provision of law. I can't remember what it is. Twenty four VSA ten sixty one or something where they have to have a we have to give notice of the of the sale, and a certain number of days have to 60 pass. Sixty days. Yeah, a certain number of days have to pass, and then uh, then the then the um, uh, title can pass. Yeah. So I think I would recommend that the board uh, move to uh, accept one of the bids subject to is it 24 whatever 24 it is. VSA 1061A. Do we know what that property value would be as it sets now? Assessed value? <laughs> yeah, assessed value. What would it be? I mean, I don't know. I know that we got we're looking at a bit of eleven grand, but I mean, I just wonder if it's thirty thousand. So I don't know what a village lot goes for. I can't there remember. Around thirty. I don't know. I'm just throwing that number I, out. We don't really know. We know what value. we have into it. That's yeah. what. That's a lot what. Oh, you're never going to get what you have into it. It's just a matter of what well, happens. So the it'll be back on the tax rolls. Yeah, that's uh, exactly. That's what I was, to that's what I was just trying to figure out. You know, we're taking love and plus we're going to get tax money mm -hmm. over the years, and if she builds a house on it, it's going to go up in a value anyway. So, yeah. Dory. So can I just add my two cents? Nina is the abutter, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming she would just extend her property. Sharon is going to renovate the barn. And build a house, which is going to generate more taxes. Right. So my vote is for Sharon. Well, if that's the case, I don't have a problem making a motion to that effect. Then. Okay. okay I'll make the motion that the Rockingham Select Board accept the bid from Sharon Bachelli in the amount of eleven thousand dollars for the property located and identified as thirty-eight Green Street, parcel number two three four four zero 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 three eight. In accordance with 24 VSA section 1061A. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Congratulations. Get on the tax roll. Yes. Thank you. It'd be nice to have Finally. something on that. Well, we do have to go through this process. And, right. You know, so I don't anticipate anything to come out of that. Yep. But what I would do is also, I'll be returning the check to. Um, Right. Nina. Nina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we can discuss the USDA grant. For there the we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to run this meeting, aren't I? <laughs> Can't tell the Yeah, I mean, I kind of mentioned it before, but um, uh, I had gone to a conference and actually sat down with one of the heads of the regional USDA and he had I talked to him about uh, the, our, our project here and he said you should absolutely apply for a, uh, a facilities grant to be perfect because it it uh, deals with uh, ADA compliance and it's an historic building it, it met every one of the check marks in their um, um, uh, requirements and so we're good to go on that so it'll be $50,000 grant and well we will have to get some uh, get some prices from uh, uh, from suppliers, there's not that many people who do this. Um, I have Robin Sweetapple who is um, uh, working with me. She's not only an architect but also does grant work. So she put together the grant for us, and 
uh, with very good success. She's been following up, so uh, um, that you know, just want to make sure you knew about that. Uh, it hasn't cost us a lot, but it's been obviously been very successful. Um, so uh, we got a call from an email from USDA. They want to meet this next week uh, with both myself and uh, with Susan to go over whatever paperwork needs to be done. And so I just wanted the board to uh, authorize us to sign any documents that uh, are necessary to accept the, the grant. And so moved. Is there a second? Seconded. Any discussion? I have a, uh, what did you say again that we think it's going to, the total cost of the project? Well, we had got an estimate uh, from our, uh, the guy, the, the people who do it for us now. Bay State, I believe. Yeah, Bay State um, Elevator. And I, I think the number was ninety. Eight thousand somewhere around a hundred grand, yeah. And uh, that was from 2015. They said that they would honor that price as uh, late as this last year, um, because the USDA rules we have to go out and get bids. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, uh, I'll have uh, uh, Robin help out with with that. And there's still funds in that bond. Account. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's quite a yeah, there's enough to which frees up money that we can do the steps outside in the alley and you know a few other things and I was waiting on those other projects until I heard more information about about this um, elevator grant so which is, this is good news okay any, any other questions all in favor aye. Aye. aye okay we don't need to review okay review over time and comp time report I was just thinking winter was over. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but look at it, it's just peril and they It is, but wait till we see next week, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We may have a mud season yet. I know. Um, any concerns on that? No. Okay, review items for the next meeting, May 1st. Looks like we ideally will have the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, Where are we at with the town highway, the highway employee? Is that Those were due Friday. Uh, Kerry was has been out. Uh, we have a folder full of stuff uh, for you. There were several. Right, and the uh, maintenance position. I'm looking over those applications now. I think we've got five or six, mm -hmm. so that we got that. Um, Public works director. I've gotten. Um, uh, job descriptions and uh, ads from about five other communities that are actually have been doing it over the past month or so and I'll just I'll put something good together that meets our needs uh, so yeah we're moving along on those okay so sidewalks um, there's something else we just can we just talk about something else <laughs> but, just but this just I don't, this can go another business yeah um, question there. Anyway, if you think of anything for the next meeting, let us know, because it can't be just one item. Um, agenda items for the joint board meeting, which is now May 29. Ideally, we should have a report from our this committee, tra transportation committee. There's a goal for you. When is it? May 29th. May 29th. Would there likely be a meeting before that mm -hmm. for the hiring process? Of the joint board? Yeah. Po quite possibly, yes. Yeah. Let me think yeah. About that. Um, yeah, there probably will be. All right. Review and approve order bills and warrants. I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have also questions. Well, I can clarify we similar one questions thing on the. Stephen Cuda bill, that was not for the new manager. That was a bill for December work that he did for us. Who's that? Um, if you notice in here, there was a bill just for uh, Parker and Cuda. Oh, yeah. That wasn't for the new manager. If the memo says new manager work, it's not new manager work. I mean, not the manager that we're hiring work. It was for a discussion we had with the joint board, I believe, way back in December. So just to clarify that. Sure. Gaetano? My question is the 10, 10 and a half church fire protection, I assume, but we ran out of space. Uh, payment to the village 
the amount of $1,939.30. That was a water bill, I believe, that was in, not had not been paid, and I wasn't sure. It says fire know. protection. But if you look yeah, at the actual protection. bill, no, if you look at the actual bill. The fire protection it? portion of the bill. Thousand something dollars? No. No. I, no. It, I think it was a water bill that was not, had we, not been. Did we paid. have that? Uh, have we taken that bill over? Is the town taking that building over yet? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. September. So that October. probably, as Sue says, it's probably a water bill that was due with that. When you look at the actual invoice, it there was fire depiction, but fire depiction was like, I don't know, $3 or something. But there was a water, unpaid water delinquent delinquency in there. And I just don't know why it was never. If we took it over in September, why we hadn't paid it then? I don't know what took so long. I to don't get know. It. I didn't see that. Yeah. So this is for that last um, owners neglecting to pay their water bill. We in, we inherited. We inherited their, that. Yes. We can't go after them for that? We can't go after them for anything. Well, well there, there, there's a the bankruptcy years, issue, yeah. but you know, the, the is, there is the property next door, and uh, I have asked the village attorney to, or uh, it was Ray, who was a town agent working on this, um, to see if there's any way that we can you know, attach that property or some other property to try to get some money back. And the answer has always been, you know, because of bankruptcy, it was not possible, but uh, I'll try one more time. And see what we do, because we're about to, you know, we're about to enter into a, you know, a demolition project. It's not going to be good financially. Okay, Tom. Just looking through these other fire protection ones, there's an eight cent charge to. Yeah. These other three good. abandoned buildings that have now since been demolished, but are we are we really writing a check for eight cents? This check number is listed for the amount eight cents. Three different times. Hide green. Page? Is that uh, top right? Page two, possibly. Old oh, terrace. Back of the first page, page one. Eight cents. Three different times we're writing a check. For Hyde Street, Green, Old Terrace. Um, I mean, if these are old water actual, bills, I don't believe they're actual checks. It says check cut. number. Right. I think it's. Oh, they're all the same. I don't think it's a paper check. But, uh, is it eight cents for an abandoned building? Is that? I don't know why it's. Not so much the amount, it's curiosity as yeah. the why yeah. would you spend you it's probably spent some time doing it, which cost ten dollars just of your own time, but I'll find that out. Yeah, it's all in one check. It is. Yeah. 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 Right. But um, why but, but it just seems funny, eight cents. I mean like Yep. I'll find it out. All right, anything else? Peter, did you You're done? See? Are you done, Gaetano? I am done, yes. Peter? The two laptops, mm. were they just replacements? Or One of them, them was from a year ago. That we, I thought we had paid that off. That was um, actually when I first started. That was a computer we we picked up. And the other one was for the um, development office. CLG, yeah. yeah. But uh, those were purchased long ago, and for some mm -hmm. reason Dell didn't bill us till. Just recently, so they, one of them they usually a, give you a, quite a long time. You, you get like zero percent loans for. A, we, no, we didn't ask for a loan. We, I thought I thought that had been taken care of a long time ago through Theo uh, and Nimric, but we never got an invoice. It's quite and a difference in the numbers. You notice that one? Yours was six hundred two dollars, and the other one's twenty two hundred fifteen dollars. Oh, mine was allocated between town and village. Oh, okay. I, I just. I mean, and the other one was not just a CLG, but it's also um, uh, thin, a couple of thin clients, which means they're only 400 bucks a pop. And I think we got three of those, including one for mine. Yeah. Oh, so it's more than one then? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, mine was allocated, and we had another one for a f in the finance office that was allocated, so it's. We have to. No, I just thought the discrepancy in the number just looked funny. That's all. 
Anything else? One I already talked to Mike about and uh, on page not a seven. The rear suspension on a 2014 Freightliner. Mike tells me he thinks they should have been covered by warranty. I figured out what that was. It's only a four year old truck. I figured out what it was. The center pin broke on the spring stack. Yeah. Keeps it in line between U bolts over the spring perch. Well, that broke. And if you're doing a free trip, the guy found the leaf spring sticking out. Wally had hurt his back. He was out. Wally's been out for two weeks with back injury. So I had. I needed it for the storm. Oh, yeah, and I, I don't, I don't. But no, I sent it to Patriots. When I got the invoice, I called Wally and I questioned it. And he was going to look into it. And for whatever reason, it didn't, you know, because he was out, he didn't get it done. But that invoice, I had actually held in my folder. And probably in my haste, I take responsibility for it. I handed it in by accident before I got an answer. No problem. I'll find out first thing in the morning. All right. I'll call Sandy at Patriots. I agree that should be a warranty thing. Whether the U-bolts were, uh, loose and caused it to break or broke you I don't know but I'll find out speaking of Patriots we we given uh, we've been talking to them some about this year's truck uh, they've actually given us a uh, proposal on a truck and we need to first I think I may have mentioned in the past I want to see if it's it's something that um, someone else has bid on so it's a it's a good price so I want to come back to the board with something in the next uh, at the next meeting we, we do need to pull the trigger on that vehicle and um, you know, and borrow some money this this year just to keep in line with uh, our the, the borrowing schedule. Okay. A motion to any more questions on the bills and warrants? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any other business, Doreen? I, I just have a question about the property on Hapgood Place. You know, I walk my dog. Center Avenue B and Front Street, and you can look down, and that tarp is all ripped, and yep. the roof is wide yep, open. It's wide open. Has been for quite that's a while. A well over a year. That was last in bankruptcy too, if we recall mm -hmm. correctly. That's that's my understanding. Yeah. Still, I believe it still is. I don't see notice that it has not come right. out of it, but it's, it's a disaster. Yeah. We can't do anything. Mm. Is that right? It just is what it is. Um. I can check and see if it's still in bankruptcy. You, you, you can't do anything toward the previous owner while it's in that status. But if it's lifted, we can you know, do health orders or we can find out. If I remember, that was declared an unsafe building. At one time, I, think, I believe so. Which then would fall on the village to handle. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I remember they that. got the unsafe building ordinance. Yeah, I don't recall if we had it or not. I think Bill Weston shut it down. I believe that may have occurred, yes, on a recollection. And it was boarded up. And yeah. People were in it. Officer got hurt going inside after the people. Yeah. I'm talking about that building for. Mm -hmm. Peter? We're making progress, though, little by little on these buildings. Uh, we're gaining. Um, yeah, uh, and just as, as a note, I did download the blight ordinances from Rutland and Springfield. Um, kind of interesting when you read them. The Rutland one is more comprehensive than Springfield, which I was surprised seeing as Ancuda wrote that one. But uh, I think Springfield said that they're revisiting it. I read in they're the expanding it. They're going to try and catch up to what Rutland did. Hmm. Because Rutland specifically states a product of a building that looks, it's blight on creek, blight on the neighborhood, and causes you know a reflection on property values in that neighborhood. Then they can they can consider that as that. And hmm. it's, uh, I just got a question as to how they handle their bankruptcy issues, like we're doing now with ours. You know, do they sit there and wait, or and, and I think in Rutland they they moved on a couple of them that were. There. Yeah, I mean, a municipality can exercise its police powers under uh, uh, even under bankruptcy, so you can do so. that. So, Stephen, can I tell me? Just looking at this maintenance plan we just approved, but we're gonna hope to possibly get the timing like the rest of the Westminster Street. Possibly yeah, the, the, the items that are company. Yeah, the items that are close to you know with, with close proximity, we're gonna we're gonna see about uh, well, working with that that vendor. We kind of added from church to all the way to the tomb now. We, yeah, we'll have to have a discussion with them. But other ones, Saxons River and all that, we would we would need to go out to bid. Well, it depends on. And then 
But we'll we'll examine that. We were going to sit down with with uh, Everett also and have him help us out a little bit on on this. Because some of those bidding these out like infringe this timeline where we don't want to be doing stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Old home days. Mm -hmm. This one's going to start up on uh, 121 first. Yeah, Bob said that. Yeah. yeah, we'll need to figure out how best to bid these out, but to get it done in short order. Yeah. Okay. Executive session if necessary. I don't think it is. Well, all right. Move to approve. Move to adjourn. Excuse me. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Thank you.